Previously, we saw that water can behave both as a Bronsted-Lowry acid and a Bronsted-Lowry base. So as a result, when two water molecules are together, they can react in an acid-base reaction. And this occurs in very small amounts. Uh, another way we would say this is that the equilibrium favors the reactants. So the equilibrium is very far to the left. So this doesn't happen a lot, but here's a reaction and I wrote it here and you can see I wrote one water in uh, blue and one water in red. And what's happening is one of the waters is donating and its proton or H plus to the other water. And that's what, that's our definition of acids and bases. So in this case, the blue water is acting like an acid and the red water is acting like a base. And so we produce the hydroxide ion and the hydronium ion, and this occurs in any water solution. Now, this is like an, is this is an equilibrium, and so we can write an equilibrium constant, and uh, with some adjustments on the equilibrium constant that we learned about in a previous chapter, we get what's an equilibrium constant for water, or what they call the ion product a constant for water. So you can see here they label it, it still has a K, but now they put a lowercase little w there. So um, that tells us it's the ion product constant for water. And what it equals is the concentration of the hydronium ion, which remember this represents the acid concentration and the hydro, uh, con times the concentration of the hydroxide ion and this is representing the base concentration. So in every water solution this occurs and if you see it's always, it's kind of cool, it's a constant. And if we're around 25 degrees Celsius, which is room temperature, the KW, the ion product constant, always has the same value. And for 25, it's 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So here, and I put it, I probably should have put this in, uh, well, maybe I'll highlight it. Um... If we look here, this is an important equation right here. This is one of the equations we'll use to solve some of our problems right here. And you don't have to memorize it. It's going to be given. And in fact, let's see how it can help us to determine the relative acid and base concentrations in a solution. So on the first problem I wrote, calculate the hydroxide ion concentration when the hydronium ion concentration is 10 to the negative 8. Well, we'll in all of our problems, we will be uh, working at 25 degrees Celsius. Whoops, that is not helpful. <laughs> Let me change back to my marker. So we would say we know that 1 times 10 to the negative 14 equals the acid concentration times the base concentration. And from our problem, we were given the acid concentration. So just rewriting, it's going to equal. Okay, now I wrote, and I did this example on person, purpose, this is 10 to the negative 8. In my calculator, I have to put a 1 in there. A 10 to the negative 8 is the same as 1 times 10 to the negative 8. Your calculator, you may not have to, um, but I just wanted to give you that as an example. And then the, I don't know the hydroxide ion concentration. That is what they're asking me to find. So rearranging, I, I'm going to divide onto the other side. So 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 8 equals the hydroxide ion concentration. Now you can solve this in your calculator if you want. Recall some of you, the way you enter it into your calculator when you're dividing by an exponent, you need to use the parentheses. So if you do it in your calculator, you would get 1 times 10 to the negative 6, and that would be your answer. That's the answer of our hydroxide ion concentration. Now, <clears throat> 
This one I didn't have to do in my head. Recalling how exponents work, uh, you could divide the coefficients and one by one is a one. And then remember the exponents, uh, you, when you're dividing, you subtract. So it's negative 14 minus a negative eight, and that gives me a negative six. So sometimes if you remember those kind of things, you can do them in your head. But you could also, you would get the same answer if you did this in your calculator. So let's do the site, another one. So this one is asks, asks the opposite. It says calculate the hydronium ion concentration when hydroxide ion concentration is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2. So I know the relationship between these two things is 1 times 10 to the negative 14 is equal to the hydronium ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration. In this case, I was given the hydroxide ion concentration. So I plug it in. I don't know the hydronium ion concentration. That's what I'm looking for. And this is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2. So I'm going to divide that over 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by some of you may need to include the parentheses equals the hydronium ion concentration. So this one, you could also do this uh, manually, but I'm going to use my calculator. And plugging this in, I get 8.3 times 10 to the negative 13. So that would be my answer for my hydronium ion concentration. And I chose to use two significant figures in the um, answer because what the concentration I was given was one, and this number is a constant, so it's gonna remain um, the one there. So this is one type of problem you may encounter in the ch in this uh, chapter homework. Um, and so one equation you'll want to use is uh, this one for kW. See, we use that equation to solve both of these problems. So that's our relationship between the hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion concentration. Well, let's think in more general terms, too, in terms of a solution is acidic or basic. So what we know is if you have a neutral solution, so acids uh, neutralize bases. So when you have a neutral solution, the acid concentration equals the base concentration, and that's represented uh, by this relationship right here. Now, if we're working at 25 degrees Celsius, which we'll consider our room temperature, we know that the concentration when I multiply both of them is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. And so if we do the math to find that, what, we'll, what we find is when the concentration is, uh, when they're neutral, that that means both have to equal 1 times 10 to the negative 7, because when they're neutral, they have to equal the same amount. And this is in molarity, sorry. There we go. And so both of them equal 1 times 10 to the negative 7, both concentrations. So that 10 to the negative 7, that's your neutral point. That's a concentration that's neutral. Now, if you have an acidic solution, so just think about the word there, acidic. So if something's acidic, it means it has more acid. So the relationship becomes that the acid must be greater than the base. It has to be a larger number. So what it means for me is the acid must go more than 10 to the negative 7. And the base must go less. So an example of an, a concentration that would be more than 10 to the negative 7, that may be like 1 times 10 to the negative 3 is just an example. So if my acid concentration was 1 times 10 to the negative 3, then I would know that must be an acidic solution because it's more than 10 to the negative 7.
Now a basic solution, so just think about the word basic. So basic means that um, you have more base. So what happens is, remember the base and the acid are related. So they're, they, when you're in a water solution, you make both acid and base. So uh, in an acidic solution, it doesn't mean there's no base or hydroxide ion there. It just means that the acid is bigger than the base. In a basic solution, it, it doesn't mean there's no acid there. It just means the acid concentration is less than the base. So that's represented by this. The acid concentration is less than the base. So in this case, so remember, neutral is 10 to the negative 7. So if you're going to be basic, the basic, um, the base concentration has to get bigger than that. It has to be bigger than the neutral. And the acid concentration has to be less than that. So what's a number that's less than 10 to the negative 7? Well, 1 times 10 to the negative 10. And an interesting thing, your number won't get any uh, smaller than 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Because remember, when we multiply those two things together, they have to equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So if you have an acid, here's here. So here's a, a way to try to process it. And then also in class lessons, there's more problems. So it says if the acid is e concentration is equal to one times ten. I mean, sorry, eight point four times ten to the uh, negative third. Is it acidic, basic, or neutral? Okay, so neutral. I it, this is out. Because to be neutral, it has to be 1 times 10 to the negative 7. That's out. Okay, it's not. So now I have to say, okay, so is my acid, I, and I like to focus on, this is, has the acid. So is my acid bigger than that? That would be acidic. Or is my acid less than that? And that's basic. Because when a solution's acidic, the acid goes up. When the solution's basic, the acid goes down. And so I look over here, and this is a 10 to the negative 3. Well, 10 to the negative 3, this number right here, is greater than 1 times 10 to the negative 7. So that means this solution must be acidic because the concentration of the acid is greater than 1 times 10 to the negative 7.